Today, we're going to be raiding Invasion. This was the return of multicolor back in the day, way back in the year 2000. That's right. All right, let's look at the key bomb of the set, at least at the time. It was Cavu Titan. In fact, it was on the pack of, it was the image on the pack of the boosters. Uh, we have it for a green one generic. It's a grizzly bear. It's just a 2-2 creature. Now, uh, not particularly exciting. However, we've got the kicker. I think this was the invention of kicker, actually. Maybe I should just call the invent. This is where the origin story of kicker started. Uh, for a green 2 generic, you may pay an additional 3 mana as you play the spell. If you paid the kicker cost, Cavu Titan comes into play with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. And also it has trample. And from there, it's all, everything is history. I don't even know if it was good in standard at the time. I don't think really <laughs> almost any deck played it. It was like a limited bomb though. Played on turn 2. Also a great top deck in the late game. Yeah, everything is just kicker since then. They had ingenuity back then. Whoever created kicker, they should be paid some sort of eternal, uh, I don't know, dividends from all future sets that have something related to kicker on it. Okay, next up, let's look at Abzo's Death or Glory. I think this is also the set, the invention of split cards. Death or Glory? Is it Death slash Glory? Hold on. Oh no, it is literally Death or Glory. Okay, when I was looking up Death or Glory, it thinks Scryfall is messing up. Are you looking up Death or are you looking up Glory? Okay, we have a white for generic sorcery. Separate all creature cards in your graveyard into two face-up piles. Remove the pile of an opponent's choice from the game and return the other to play. Oh, it's the white. It's the white worse factor fiction. So, uh... I separate all my creatures in my graveyard into two face-up piles, which means things are going pretty bad for me, if that's the case. Also, why does white want this? This is like a control card. I guess for the white weenie players. And then the opponent, uh, but they do go right directly into play, so it's not like factor fiction where, you know, cards go to your hand, cards go to the graveyard. We are resurrecting some stuff. First super chat of the day, thank you so much, Balder. For the greatest magic player around, keep the streams coming. And with that, Balder, we're gonna deliver a delicious donation to your friendly neighborhood idiot crosses the purger oh is this an old car oh it is from invasion with the old border look at that for it's got grixis three generic for a six six dragon legend and it'd be a dragon flying when crosses the purge it deals combat damage to a player you may pay a black two generic if you do choose a color that player reveals their hand and discards all cards of that color from it. That's actually not too bad. If you, it basically punishes the monocolor players. You want to play all blue, all red? Well, guess what? You get smacked once and you lose everything. That's right. You don't want to play. You don't want to play with extra colors. Well, you get to play with no colors at all. Dump all your red cards into the graveyard. Next. No, actually, that was a super chat. <laughs> that was that was the donated super chat. Pollyanna, Plague Spitter was my best buddy in the Black Death deck. Plus that art. Plague, Plague Spitter. Oh, this guy. <laughs> the green, sorry, black two generic two two horror. At the beginning of your upkeep, Plague Spitter deals a singular damage to each creature and each player. But when Plague Spitter is put into the graveyard from Plague, Plague Spitter deals another one damage to each creature and each player. This uh, has some good. What's What's it called? Uh, a little bit of sacrifice energy at the beginning of upkeep. You deal a damage, sack this thing, deal more damage. I'm not. I'm honestly not familiar with the Black Death deck, although there was a like. This was like like this was the era they were trying to get around the the mono mono black mono red mono blue decks. They're trying to push push multicolor. Obviously, there is still too many good cards in monocolor to uh, to be tempted. Okay, next up, let's look at. Okay, now this is a super chat. Kagan, thank you very much for your super chat. Goblin Spy, goofiest card from this set. Are you sure? Goblin Spy. And they didn't reprint it again, which is maybe a, maybe a sign of what it's worth. Okay, uh, it's a one mana, one, one goblin. Play with the top card your library revealed. That could be good in some decks. You know, it's almost like Future Sight for you. 
but I don't think they had the tools back then to make use of it. There was like no fetch lands. Like Onslaught was like a few sets down the road. And on top of that, you still really couldn't play anything off of the top of your deck. Isn't he on our side? Yeah. Why is he spying on us? Don't ask. Ah, oh, yes. Oops. <laughs> hey, everyone. You can let, you want to know what's on top of my deck? Here you go. We all, everyone's allowed to know. Okay, next up. Satan's Catfish with Urza's Filter. Oh, yeah. Urza's still alive around this era. We have a format of artifact multicolor spells you cost... Sorry, multicolored spells cost up to two less to play. Is this actually worth it? I guess so. It's a pretty big cost reducer. It's still four mana. At four mana, I'd like to start casting my spells if you don't if you don't mind. Uh, next up, Baking Cat Bug, Assault Slash Battery. From what I remember, was one of the better split cards. Uh, it was at the time. I think it was still under Fire Nice, but this card did see a lot of play. Red mana, Assault deals 2 damage to any target, so still bolts the bird. Still bolts the Utopia, what is it called, the Utopia tree? Utopia tree. I don't know, remember how much play this card saw, but this was originally from Invasion. It was a 2 mana, 0, 2, that added 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. Sorry if I stole Utopia tree from anybody. But, uh, okay, so it still, it bolted the tree, and also for 4 mana you created a 3-3 three, three green elephant creature token. So, I mean, if there's bolting the mana dork is useless in the late game but no put a little elephant in play the thing is it only reduces the generic costs yeah and that's the problem with the urza's filter only the generic costs i guess they'll pay that blue green black red white still works the same ryan harris with the aura shards oh this card's a beating it's probably maybe one of the best most valuable cards that came out of this set for a green, white, one generic, we have an enchantment. Whenever a creature comes into play under your control, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. All right, play a creature, blow up your soul ring, play, an play another creature, blow up your uh, Rhystic Study, hit the Rhystic Study, the Mana Crypts, Mana Vaults, Grim Monoliths, all the Monoliths, they all go, they're all going to go down to the Aura Shards. This is a very, very versatile card. Um... Holy crap! This is an this. Do you have any? Does anyone have any idea what this costs? This is an uncommon from 24 years ago. Uncommon from 24 years ago has been reprinted. It costs 20 dollars. Now you can get list versions for like 10 dollars. That's still pretty damn expensive. Still uncommon. People love their aura shards. It only costs a green white if you control. Yeah, exactly. It costs a whole one less if you control the or or uh, Urza's filter. Think of that value. Ryan Harris just bought a copy. Yeah, buy it before it goes back up to twenty. Okay, uh, we have Toads with Captain. S I think you mean Captain Sisse. Captain Sisse. Oops, I did not spell Captain properly. Captain Sisse for a white green two generic two two legend tap search your library for a legend or legendary card How would that they would never word it like that today uh, Reveal that card and put it into your hand then shuffle your library. What did that mean back then? So I guess a legend was a creature that was a legend and a legendary card was a card that was not a creature Search your library for a legendary card reveal that card put it into your hand. Yeah, I'm assuming that's what it meant back then Funny that they had to make a distinction between the two now it's just legendary creature, legendary enchantment. It's all legend. Uh, Turiot with the Twilight's Call. Also, this card, this card's great. To, you, you feel, you put, you get, you basically turn to our legends every single turn. It's insane. It's actually a banger card. Uh, okay, old boy. I'm surprised you didn't start off with Empress Galena. You know what? I have to be impartial. I can't have everything start off with Merfolk. Sometimes I catch myself. I put too many blue cards in the thumbnail. Empress Galena is a blue, blue, three generic, one, three. Merfolk, legendary Merfolk Noble. Uh, for a blue, blue, tap. Gain control of target legend or legendary permanent. So basically, any legendary permanent. You got legendary permanent, I will swipe it off this way. Bring it over here. You have a commander, it's my commander now. 
not everyone's commander, it's just my commander. Your commander works for me. Above the waves, you might be mighty indeed, but down here, you belong to me. Yeah, be fear the spreading of the seas. Abzo with washout. Oh my goodness. This is a this is a weird Gotham card. Blue three generic sorcery. Return all permanents of the color of your choice to their owner's hands. So they, they were trying to punish you for playing one color. If you're like mono green, all right, green, boing. Just bounce it all. All my blue stuff stays behind. They want to encourage you to be multi. You, don't, you want to be multicolored, but actually you don't want to be too multicolored. If everything's five colors, then I just name one color and you lose everything. Everything gets bounced back. Oh, this is a banger from Beanpot to Fairy's Response. You know what? I think this is my favorite card in the entire set. Okay, blue one generic, instant. Counter target spell or ability an opponent controls that targets a land. Very specific, a land you control. Now, if a permanent's ability is countered this way, you have to destroy that permanent. And we're not done yet. You get to draw two cards. Not one, but two cards. The, the whole point of this card was to be a counter, a counter to Rishidan Port, which at the time was this huge, this massive hassle in standard. All it is, is like, it adds a mana, you can also pay one to tap people's lands. Which was just so annoying to control decks, uh, or anyone on the draw for that matter. You just get ahead and then stay ahead with rich and Port. So they like, gave Blue this weird tool. Cause like, think of it, how often does someone target your land? Like with anything? Let's say they target it with, um, Wasteland. Like they're losing the permanent anyway. So there's very few lands in the game that will target your land and stay on the board. Wasteland, Strip Mine, they all blow themselves up anyhow. So anyway, Teferi, it's like, you want to port me? I've got a response, Teferi's response. And it's uh, it's like the greatest beating of all time. Is this modern legal? It's not modern legal. Fire Nice, very popular card in modern. A little slightly popular in Legacy as well. That also, I guess, can counter the Teferi's response. You want to ice me? Well, I got a response. I'm going to counter it and draw two cards at the same time. Okay, next up, we have a super chat from Meme Baruli. Oh, coalition, uh, coalition victory. Good afternoon from the UK. It's also it's morning still for me in Canada. The coalition victory. Uh, we got for Wilberg three generic sorcery. You win the game if you control a land of each basic land type and a creature of each color. And apparently this card is so strong. I actually don't know if it's strong. I assume it's strong. It's banned in commander. Turn one, fetch triome. Turn two, get shock land. Uh, play Wilberg commander somehow. Play coalition victory, and that's it. It's over. Somehow that's going to be broken, probably. You win the game. I guess the problem is you win the game instantly. It's not like at your upkeep. You don't give people like a lot of opportunity to play around this. You'd have to kill all the Wooburg creatures in play. <laughs> Friendly neighborhood idiot says, deserved. Ban it. Keep it banned. Get it out of here. The card is busted. All right, we, uh, we found somebody who has fa has a very bad history versus the coalition victory. Welcome, Alan. Okay, next up, let's take a look at Toilet Duck's Reviving Vapors. Reviving Vapors is a, let's get the ancient scripture here. Blue, white, two generic for an instant. Reveal the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand. You gain life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Put the other cards revealed this way into your graveyard. So you get one, so four mana, get one card. That's it? I think this is pathetic. Oh, you got some life gain, big deal. It's like a very expensive impulse and it doesn't even go that deep either. Just three cards deep. As much mana you can play Factor Fiction. I actually didn't know this card existed. Factor Fiction completely stole its thunder. Okay, next up, uh, Turiot with the Spreading Plague. Black 4 generic enchantment. Whenever a creature comes into play, destroy all other creatures that share a color with it. They can't be regenerated. Whoa! 
the danger as far as I'm concerned. Man, it really screwing the... It also screws over multicol a little bit. You'd literally have to play like a green creature, a red creature, a blue creature. Creature comes with destroy all other... You do get to keep the one creature though. Just don't play any more creatures after that. Interestingly enough, you can also blow up your opponent's creatures. So if I play a blue creature, I blow up all my opponent's blue creatures. It's like an ultimate troll card. Yeah, except it's real. The cruelest strain of plague keeps its hosts alive long enough to return home and infect their families. <laughs> That'd be great in my Flicker deck. Well, by all means, put it in there. Next up, let's look at Kagan uh, with not counting foils, most valuable Metathron, Metathron Aerostat. I don't even I don't even know what the Metathrons are. The Metathron, it's a ship. No, sorry, it's it's actually been a this is a weird card. I didn't know there was a Metathron creature type. So it's creature Metathron. Whatever that means. Okay, four mana for a 2-2 ship. Flying. Blue X. You may put a creature card with converted mana cost X from your hand into play. If you do, return Metathron arrow stat to its owner's hand. It's a weird show and tell card. That is clunky as hell. So four mana with the opportunity to maybe put a creature from your hand all the way into play. And you still have to, you still have to pay the casting cost. Like what are you getting around here? Counter spells? Like this thing's not gonna dodge any counter spells. It's four mana. It doesn't even have flash. This card's awful. Okay, next up, uh, let's take a look at Carlo with the harsh judgment. Careful, judgment would come uh, in a few sets later. Harsh. Oh, is this maybe not a car? Harsh judgment. I don't think it is. Ishiguro is called Judgment? How many Judgment cards? There is no Judgment cards. Unless I'm spelling Judgment wrong. I would Harsh something. Harsh Mentor? Oh, there's no E in Judgment. Carlo, I, I don't blame you either. I would have made the same spelling mistake. Yeah, old boy over there. We got we have an English major on our in the house. We have a, okay, for a white, white, two generic enchantment, as harsh judgment comes into play, choose a color. If an instant or sorcery of the chosen color would deal damage to you, it deals that much damage to its controller instead. At least they remember me. So if an instant sorcery of the chosen color deals damage to you, it deals that much damage to its controller. So is this like just to punish red players? I choose red. Now when you bolt me, you bolt you too! Look at that, we're bol we're bolting each other! Look what I can do! Here's the thing, like, so Coffee and Buns is like anti-burn. I don't even know if this is gonna do much to burn! Like, by turn four, you're already at like five life! I've already done the worst, and you haven't even done any damage to me! Yeah. My burn hurt- heart hurts. Not really. I guess... It's interesting, I'm thinking of like, if someone goes for an Earthquake effect for like, say, 20, they would deal 20 to themselves, and I think they would deal 20 twice. Because if they deal 20 to you, then they deal 20 back at them again. Oh well. Uh, I think this card is ab abysmally terrible. It's interesting, but terrible. I mean, I mean, maybe it has its place in a certain matchup. We got John with Obliterate. Obliterate is a red, red, six generic sorcery. Can't be countered. Destroy all artifacts, creatures, and lands, and they cannot be regenerated. This was like the quintessential super sweeper at the time. Because it was uncounterable, so screw your counter spell, literally, it was in the format at the time. And, uh, and absorbs and all this other nonsense. And I think it still sees some play today. Hold on, we need to see the original one. For his family, Baron made a funeral pyre of Teleria. For Teleria. And next, we're gonna look at. Um, does anyone else have here? Arcanus, Rhea Dawnbringer. Really? Did this come out in Invasion? Oh my god, you're right! Rhea Dawnbringer. White, 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 six generic for a 4 6 uh, legendary angel. 
flying. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to play. Alright, so all your creatures that died for the like last million turns, you get them back over and over again. Also, feel free to sacrifice your creatures now that Ray of Dawnbringer is just going to bring them back every single turn. Next up, we got Alex Denton. Hello, Nikachu. Here's one for you. The first foil I ever traded for and still have this card, the Crypt Angel. The Dark Angel. The Black Four Generic 3-3 three, three Angel, flying protection from white. When Crypt Angel comes into play, return target blue or red creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Hmm. No, it's no Rhea Dawnbringer. But it's gonna have to do. Not to mention, it also had protection from white, so screw over all the white removal spells at the time. Oh, it's only when it comes into play you return a blue or red creature card from your graveyard to your hand. How many, like, blue or red cards do you play in a Crypt Angel deck, I wonder? I don't even know what you... I guess you could play... I don't know, you could get Snapcaster Major or something? Bring back something that died? Uh, there wasn't Path to Exile, but if you played Extended, there was Swords to Plowshares. Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank. That was like the quintessential removal spell at the time, but it wasn't in Standard. Okay, next up, let's look at Steve Cooper's Backlash. Red, black, one generic for an instant. Tap target, untap creature. That creature deals damage uh, equal to its power to its controller. So you got a little, uh, you mow down a blocker. Also, you thought you were going to hit me? No, you're going to hit yourself. Stop hitting yourself, opponent. Why are your creatures betraying you all of a sudden? All right, next super chat we got from Restion Serpentine. My favorite card from the set, the Armadillo Cloak. The Armadillo Cloak. Card still sees play. Oh, they made a new art. For the longest time, it was just the, it was just this art. So we have a white, green, one generic aura. Enchanted creature has plus two, plus two, and has trample. And whenever enchanted creature deals damage, you gain that much life. Now that's not life link. That is a trigger, which means when you smack your opponent, then all of a sudden trigger goes on the stack that you're going to gain that much life. So you could have life link and armadillo cloak on a creature, gain double the life, and then your life total goes to I don't know 100 or something. Feel proud that you gained so much life off of this card. Uh, still sees play even even to today. People love this card. I think it's still a popper stable in some capacity or form. Jay Thompson has a funny story. I had three Dawnbringers in play against my friend, and my more experienced friend then explained the legend rules to us. Oh no! I have an equally funny story to deal with to do with angels. My friend played Iona in their commander deck, and I explained them the ban list to them. Okay, well, moving on. Next up, uh, this is not a card. Arethusa has one. Where's Arethusa's card? Arethusa. Arethusa has a card, but apparently is not spamming it very much. Oh, here we go. Tack? Yes, that's the card name. This is going to be impossible. To f Can I put this in quotation marks? Can I find exactly Tack? Oh, God. Tack, 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 tack. Where I'm oh, here we go. There it is. Looks like Draco. Okay, we have a five mana two, two. Oh, we got five mana two, two dragon. Uh, tech gets plus zero, plus two as long as you control a planes. Has flying as long as you control an island. Gets plus two, plus zero as long as you control a swamp. Has first strike as long as you control a mountain. And has trample as long as you control a forest. Oh my goodness! I have a feeling we're going to see this in Modern Horizons 3. We already saw, we saw Draco in Modern Horizons 2. They're going to bring back tech. Tech is going to come back and be better than ever. And they're, and they're going to make it like... They're probably going to make it X. Okay, this, this is how I predict they're going to bring back tech. It'll be an X mana card, and then it gets whatever abilities, depending on what how much mana you want to spend on it. Like if you spend a blue, green, black, red, or white. And you don't have to spend all of it. You could just play it for two if you want. This card looks amazing. By all means, go play, go play with tech around here. 
And these days, uh, if you just get a, you fetch the Triome and play a Shock, you got everything. Next up, we got Emperor Sabo's Web. You don't say. I don't even know who Sabo is. But it's a two mana artifact. Comes into play, you do draw a card, which is great value. Lands with an activated ability that don't produce mana, don't untap during their controller's untap steps. That don't produce. Oh, it has to be an activated ability that does not produce mana. I think what it means like Rishon and Port had a tapped ability. Uh, Wasteland had a tap. Well, Wasteland's useless. It's like more Rishon and Port hate. What else would this hate on? Maybe Dust Bowl, Maze of Eth. Uh, I guess this would hit Maze of Eth relatively well. Sabo's Web should be printed to modern. What would it even do? I guess what it. I guess if you can get fetch lands to enter the battlefield tapped, you would screw them over. Yeah, that's interesting. That would be a combo. It's not a reliable combo. If it's a bad combo, that could actually work. Okay, next up, let's go with... Uh, oh, Krakus hit it. Krak but Krakus has to be in play tapped already. Oh, no, no, not really, actually. Yeah, you activate Krakus once and then boom. Zavo's web would turn it off. Dark Depths, well, Dark Depths won't untap, but Dark Depths, A, wasn't adding mana. B, is has no purpose but to just sit there and look pretty anyway. Evan says, did we do Collective Restraint? Absolutely not. Collective Restraint for four mana, it's an enchantment. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays X for each creature attacking you, where X is the number of basic land types among lands you control. This cost is paid as attackers are declared. So it's, it's, uh, it's basically like another ghostly prison type card. So if you're playing blue-white, you can go stacks them super hard with Collective Restraint. Okay, next up, a super chat from Emperor, the Divine Presence. Divine Presence, a white 2 generic uh, enchantment. If a source would deal 4 damage or more to a creature or player, then source deals 3 damage to that creature or player instead. Oh, that's great! So, I mean, if you come hit me for, like, a million damage, you're just gonna hit me for a lightning bolt-like damage. Still, it's gonna be lethal! This card seems just terrible. It's not really preventing all that much. On top of that, I think it also, like, reduces the amount of damage I'm going to do, too! So, like, my creatures are weaker, everyone's creatures are weaker, we all deal three damage to each other. Pathetic. Uh, Mark Zilla, Ar Aura Shards. Didn't we do this one? Aura Shards. Pretty sure we did that. Yeah, we did the Aura Shards. The Abyssal, Spite Malice. Spite Malice is a split card. See, the split card, this is the origin of the split cards, too. They were very innovative back in Invasion. Spite! A blue three generic instant. Carry target non-creature spells. That is a very expensive negate. Malice. Black three generic instant. Destroy target non-black creature and it can't be regenerated. But for four mana, that's not too bad to have on a split card. Just one of these should be cheaper, probably. Maybe? To make it a little bit, a little bit more playable. Yeah, four mana negate. And then they printed... Ne what is negate? I think negate came after invasion. Oh, this is the original one. This is the invasion card. Pretty sure Negate came a little bit afterwards. I don't know the origin story of Negate. Let's look up Negate. Negate! Where you come from? Yeah, Morning Tide. So they power... That, that's power creep, people. We went from a two-sided Spite Malice to a one-sided Super Negate. That's power creep in Magic the Gathering. Alright, you hear the music. That means it is time to thank our sponsors. FusionGamingOnline.com Don't forget... Uh, oh yeah, the Fusion Open is coming out April 27th to 28th. If you're in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, Canada, go check that out. Saturday is Modern, Sunday is Pioneer, but they have Commander side events happening throughout the entire weekend. 
And also, the Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Spoilers are slowly seeping out. If you need your singles for the Outlaws of Thunder Junction, go get them at FusionGamingOnline.com because it supports the channel. You can support yourself using coupon code Nikachu at checkout to get 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting magic cards on Magic Online, the superior online digital client, where you can play Standard, Pioneer, Modern, Legacy, Vintage, Commander, and more. By more, I mean more mere. If you get my drift. Uh, you can support and you can play every deck and now all those formats. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore Z U E. Okay, back to invasion. We're invading. They invaded us big time. Okay, Mikhail, harsh judgment. It will not deal damage to you. Inst it instead deals all the damage to its controller. Huh? Got more harsh around here? Harsh judge. Wait, oh, we we looked at that card. Forgot about that. Yeah, we looked at that card. If it deals damage to you, it deals all that that much. It deals that damage to its controller instead. That's right. Oh, do you know what? Instead. Oh! You guys were actually telling me, like, yeah, this is real hate. I was thinking, like, it just bounced, like, I deal four damage to you, I deal four damage to me. No, it's instead. So, actually, against a burn player, it does, if you're a complete mono red burn player, no creatures, you're lost if this thing hits the battlefield. I mean, it's, it's literally GG. Uh, well, maybe not completely. You could play like Curse Scroll or something. Artifact. Some artifacts might be able to deal some damage, but it's basically over. It's basically. And these days, actually, you could get around it with Planeswalkers. Go play a Chandra or something and deal the rest of the damage. Only, only uh, bounces damage from instants and sorcerers. Yeah, take that burn. Mono red burn players. Ooh, Polarog with the Undermine. Undermine was a very unique counterspell at the time. Uh, the second best counterspell at the time. Maybe the third best counterspell at the time, because counterspell was still legal in the format. Okay, blue, blue, black, instant counter target spell, and its controller loses three life. Set. That looks really good on paper, but in practice, it's really not that good. The main problem is, like... Control doesn't need to like dome their opponent for like anything. They don't need a counter spell with a lightning bolt attached to it. it. So it looks really cool, but it was like clearly the worst version of a counter spell. Because they, they did have. Is anyone. Did anyone super chat absorb? Does anyone have absorb? No one has absorb. Did anyone mention absorb? Can I give credit to somebody who said absorb? No one said absorb! What's wrong with you people? This is like, this is Absorb's origin story too. It's like a big card in um, Pioneer right now. Okay, so this is where Absorb came from. Invasion. It was a blue, blue, white instant counter target spell. You gain, you gain three life. That was huge for the control decks at the time. Okay, counter a spell and then Pad your life total, making it increasingly more difficult for all the decks that were aggro mid-range to, to beat you. Whereas with Undermine, if I'm an aggro deck, like, I don't care I lost three life to your control deck. Big deal. Is gaining life better? Uh, it's infinitely better. If they put Undermine in Pioneer, it's not even clear that it would see play, to be honest. Like, the fact that Absorb gains life is just so much more important to control decks. I want to play this. Okay, next up, let's take a look at. Uh, since you didn't know them, the Meta Metathron Transport. What the hell are these cards? There was another Metathron in the same set. The three mana one three. It's a Metathron creature flying. Can't be blocked by blue creatures. Honestly, most blue creatures that fly, flew at the time couldn't block very well anyway. Uh, or maybe they could. They only could block flyers. Pay a blue. Target creature becomes blue until end of turn. This is this card is like so bad. It's three mana for a 1-3. And I have to activate this ability to turn my opponent's creatures blue. So they can't block my thing. 
It might as well just say, pay a blue, target creature can't block this thing this turn. It's very, very sad. I don't even know how, I guess the, this is to get around the white creatures that were flying at the time. Get around that, get around that Ray of Dawn bringer. It's great with Pyroblast, is it? Oh yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you turn it, okay, there has some utility. You turn it blue and then you blow it up with Pyroblast and red element, blue elemental blast. No, red, red elemental blast. So you need to be playing blue red at the same time in the first place. Yeah, but the one damage, the one damage does add up, that's for sure. Urza make a bunch of blue people called the Metathran to combat Frexia. No wonder Urza lost. Actually, did he lose? Urza died somewhere along the timeline, so I'm assuming he just lost. Okay, Bacon Catbug, uh, you've got Fact or Fiction, weakest card ever printed. Some, I, it's on Modern Play in the year 2022, I think, I'll have you know. Uh, oh, it's not one of these ore cards. Let's get rid of the ore. There we go. Let's get the original. It came in gold border, too. Okay, from Invasion, we have a blue three generic instant. This was a huge game changer at the time. They instantly knew that this card was an absolute banger. Reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two face-up piles. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. So it was like it was a really fun card in that in that way too because um, oh what do you need in your hand are you choked on mana do you need mana how do I divide the piles and there are some people that are like well maybe it's actually better to go five to zero because maybe you want this one card in your graveyard or any cards in your graveyard to achieve threshold or something you know a few sets later threshold would become a thing. So, uh, Factor Fiction, super popular card advantage card. You're at least going to draw. It's like at least a three for one. Um, could be even better sometimes. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Sometimes I, I'll get like, it would be like land, 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 Wrath of God. I put Wrath of God in one pile and my opponent just picks up all the lands and I'm like, ah, damn it. I made the piles wrong. I screwed up my piles. They need those lands. Okay, next up, we got Toad's Lobotomy. This is a, I always found that this is a weird card. It looks like they're about to kiss, but they're, this person's going to open up their brain. Uh, sorcery for four mana. Look at target player's hand and choose a card other than basic land card from it. Search that player's graveyard hand and library for all cards of the same name as the chosen card and remove them from the game. Then that player shuffles their library. So this is the original card to like hate off like combo decks effectively. And since then they've made like way better versions of this card. Um, in fact, surgical extraction costs one mana. In fact, actually it costs no mana. You can play it for nothing. Uh, and they have many different types of cards. Like for four mana these days, it would be uncounterable. And the effect is generally three mana these days. So it was like a pretty, it was a decent card at the time. And it's only got better. They like power crept this type of card. To bring in line with like the power level of Magic the Gathering these days anyhow. Uh, oh, did Fires cut? Yeah, Fires of Yavimaya. Huge game changer. A huge game changer at the time. Let's look at the original. Uh, three mana enchantment, which means you go turn one land or elves, turn two fires. Creatures, creatures you control have haste. You can also sack it to give your creatures plus two plus two until end of turn. So not only are your creatures coming out fast and fast and furious, if your opponent even threatens to block, you can just sack the fires to kill the creature. Like it, it, the, whoever would have had the fires deck, I would be so curious to know what this card would do in modern. Do not underestimate big thick creatures. Big chunky creatures attacking immediately on turn three through mana dorks. You know, you play fires turn two and like, they come out fast uh, and they're just hard to kill in combat thanks to sacrificing your fires of Yavimaya. Maybe Modern Horizons 3? Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? Uh, okay, let's look at. Anyone not get a card yet? <laughs> Carlo says lobotomy equals anti-relentless rats. Yeah, you're gonna lose all your rats. That's for sure. Lose all the rats. Uh, I don't think Christopher B got a card yet today. Nightscape Master? There's Nightscape Familiar. Okay, you chose this one. 
Black, black, two generic, a two, two wizard. Pay blue, blue, tap. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Or you pay double red, tap. Night scale, Nightscape Master deals two damage to target, to any, to target creature. Uh, this card saw like no play as far as I'm concerned, if, if I remember correctly. Now the familiar saw a ton of play. Nightscape familiar. Sorry if I'm stealing this from someone. Am I stealing this from somebody? Uh, I don't see it in the super chats. This card saw a ton. Oh, is this game from Plane Shift? Oh, forget it. I'm an idiot. This didn't come out. All right. Uh, backspace is the only Nightscape at the time that came out. Uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the, the familiar uh, some other time, frankly. What is the card Re keeps plugging? I don't know. Where's Re? Re, where are you? Breaking Wave. Blue, blue, two generic sorcery. You may play Breaking Wave anytime. You could play an instant if you pay two more to play it. Oh, so basically, for an, for an additional two mana, you can play it at instant speed. Simultaneously, untap all tap creatures and tap. All untapped creatures. That is just weird. Uh, it looks like a great combat trick in, like, Commander. All right, so, like, somebody swings out at somebody. The next turn, someone's about to swing back, but then you're like, all right, breaking wave. Your stuff is tapped. The other player untapped all their stuff. That's pretty cool. wonder if it, maybe it's a two-headed giant bomb. You could also do it in combat, too. So instant speed... Like, the tapped creatures are still tapped at attacking, but you untap all your creatures and block. Simultaneously. Exactly. Uh, next super chat. Coming from... Oh, no! Resident Serpentine, you got... Sniped. Just sniped. Like, it's just the worst time. Uh, maybe you have another card. You have another card, Resident Serpentine? Probably not. Well, you, you super chatted and scrammed. Okay, we're gonna donate. Uh, we'll donate to someone who foresees dueling ground. Dueling grounds, to be exact. Uh, the white, green, one generic enchantment. No more than one creature may attack each turn, and no more than one creature may block this turn. Wow, this is a banger card. You add this with menace creatures, and it's like an unbeatable combo. I attack. Can you block? No, you cannot block. Isn't this just like an enchantment? Is this that Arbiter card? Isn't it Silent Arbiter? No more than one creature can attack each combat. No more than one creature can block each combat. It's Silent Arbiter, but in enchantment form. There we go. Yeah, this would have been great for yesterday's stream. You better, yeah, very slow card. Very slow the game down. Screw. <laughs> oh no, there's a token player at the table. Ah, damn it. Imagine the token player is playing with dueling grounds. That would be terrible. That would be that would be a brutal board state. Like would people just concede at the idea? Like they need enchantment destruction or a board wipe. And what if they uh, what if they rule zeroed out board wipes and and enchantment destruction? Then the game is just a lock. Welcome, Q cutie pie Haley. I've never been on here before live. Now you're here live. Almond artifact mutation. Come an invasion. Red, green, instant. Destroy target artifact. It can't be regenerated. Put X, 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens into play where X is its converted mana cost. That card's great. You know what they should do? They should make a same version of this card, but with uh, you can destroy enchantments as well. I don't even think it'd be that strong. This card sees literally no play. Could We can power creep this card a little bit. From, sh from shards and splinters, I call forth my living horde. Absolutely. And, like, if you can't even blow up Soul Ring for a whole lot of tokens. Okay, next up, let's take a look at Kagan's, uh, the third from the set, the Mattathren Zombie. What the hell are these Mattathrens? The Lost Creature Type. The Mattathren. Okay, so this is a Mattathren Zombie for two mana, and its creature type is Mattathren Zombie. You know, we've gone back to um, naming creature types based on 
N naming the creature based on its creature type or giving the creature type based on its name okay what does it's a literally a one one that you can pay a black and regenerate it it is uh very very boring card i can see why the meta threads didn't really hit well with anybody actually not <laughs> it hit well it hit with someone hit with kagan kagan was like a huge fan of the meta threads this is like a just a completely it's like is it like the worst creature type in existence next to the kobolds Beanpot says Elvish Champion should be mentioned. Elvish Champion? Did it come from this set? Holy crap! You're right! And there were elves back then. And this is still this is still at the time that they called like the Lords a Lord. Green Green 1 generic 2 2. It's a Lord. All elves get plus one plus one and have forest walk. Later they would have ratted these things to so that they are an elf themselves. And then it would be all other elves get plus one plus one in forest walk. See, by saying all elves get plus one plus one in forest walk, it's technically not counting itself, is which is what like they wanted it to do. And look what they know, like 20, 22 years later, they would come up with Yavamaya, Cradle of something, Cradle of Growth. And now your elvish champion gets unblockable creatures. Thanks to giving all your opponents some forests around here. Not the Zilla, Disruptor Oft. Uh, let's look at Disrupt. That was a really unique card at the time. I had this in my sideboard. Or other people had it against me in their sideboard, like, pretty often. It's a blue instant. Counter target instant or sorcery spell unless its controller pays one and you drew a card. So, it's like a... Like, if you know your opponents are playing instants and sorceries, you know they're going to tap out. This was, like, a one-mana cryptic command. I mean, this was, like, I guess... a the Veil of Summer of the Era. Not nearly as good, because well, your opponent could play the one. But also, you could also just draw a card no matter what happened. Get countered or not, it didn't matter. Okay, next up, let's take a look at Emperor's Tsabo Tavok. Is that a commander or something? Because uh, you asked who it was, Nikachu. Oh, Tsabo? It's the Tsabo! This legendary creature got no love at the time, I can tell you that much. Uh, didn't see any standard play, extended play, nothing. Red, black, five generic, five, four legend, first strike, protection from other legends. Ooh, I can see why commander players might like that card. Anyone playing this in commander? We got Wes. Wes plays it. T Sabo Tavak, my commander. All right, there we go. You have protection from everyone else's commander. Black, black, tap, destroy the legendary creatures. Oh God, it can't be regenerated. It's very specifically legendary creature. It's been eradicated to that. Okay. And you know what? These days, that five generic man, that means nothing. It means absolutely nothing in commander. So this is like a top tier commander to go play. Protection from other commanders. And you can blow them all up. It's the commander assassin around here. I think invasion is when do domain became a thing. Um... I think yes, in some sense. I don't know if they called it domain, but they had like domain like mechanics. Like if you control blue source, sorry, if you control, yeah, if you control like these colors, you get a benefit. If you control like a swamp, a plains, an island, you get these benefits. Markzilla with Frexian Altar. Oh, this also came from Invasion. Three mana, sack a creature, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Billions of decks play this card. The last one is Skyweaver. Oh my goodness. At least they didn't call it. They didn't they didn't call it a Matathran anymore. Alright, the Skyweaver. I don't even know what a Matathran is anymore. Like this, this is not even the Oracle text. So apparently this is a Metathran. I thought Metathran was like some sort of ship. Uh now it can be a wizard. We have a blue, one generic, two, one wizard. Sorry, it's a Metathran wizard. With pay two, target white or black creature. Gains flying until end of turn. Get that? Red Bull does give you wings. Skyweaver is the is the Red Bull. Uh, next up. The flavor text on Sabo is great. Oh, did I miss that? I might also pity my enemies if it wasn't so amusing to watch them die. Well spoken, Saba. Well spoken. 
Spoken like a true evil genius. <laughs> Invasion is the most 5 out of 10 set ever. Back then, it was a huge banger. Like, it was a super popular set of time. It's like almost revitalized magic. You talk about like a bunch of... A lot of people would say they got into magic around this era because Invasion was so popular. Uh, but the, like, yeah, like, looking back at the cards, not a lot of them aged well. A lot of them aged very, very poorly. Apparently, it's a very fun format to draft. Okay, seven foot. Bubbling Beebles. Is that around here? Oh, this is not of the set. That's a few, that's a few, that's even like a whole block back. It was good, in my opinion. Apocalypse and Aussie were a big boom for MTG. Oh, it revitalized magic in a big way. Old boy says, I'd say Invasion is one of the better commander sets in retrospect. Really? That's a bit weird to me to hear that. Uh, Urza invented the Metathron to fight the Frexians. Well, no wonder the Frexians won. Uh, I actually don't know if the Frexians won, but the Fre all I know is by today, the Frexians are still around. I have not heard of the Metathrans. Metathrans, they are, they're dead. They're over. They went kaput. Okay, now next up, let's take a look at... Let's take a look at this one. Abzo's Teferi's Moat. You ever want to own Moat, but it's like $800? Well, you can get Teferi's Moat. It's an even better one. As Teferi comes into, Teferi's Moat comes into play, you choose a color. And creatures of the cho chosen color without flying can't attack you. See, Teferi's Moat prevents everyone from attacking. You can just choose one color that's the most annoying and attack with the other colors because you play them. Metherans went extinct because Frexia fell. So what, did they win? And then Frex, and then it's like, well, we don't need you anymore, Metherans. We're just going to kill you all off. Okay, Urza lost. Then Guff rewrote the story. So Urza saved Dominaria from Yogmoth. Then Drar cut Urza's head off because he did a lot of horrible things to win, including killing Sarah. I find it so strange that... Urza is stupid enough to let Gerard cut his head off. I find that's very bizarre. Darkstar Ashura, thank you very much for the super chat. Overabundance. What a weird looking card. This is a uh, red, green, black, sorry. Yeah, red, green, one generic enchantment. Whenever a player taps a land for mana, that player adds one additional mana to their mana pool for the same type, and overabundance deals one damage to them. So, mana at any cost. So, and everyone has to take the damage. Also, this is interesting, back then they had mana burn. What if I tried to force you to add mana and then make you deal, take mana burn and also take damage from the overabundance? Look at that art, I think the art's pretty good. I like that how how well centered it is. Auto correct can't correct S's and A's. I don't know. First proper Urza card, the Blind Seer. Is this around here? Oh yeah, it was Urza himself. Blue blue two generic leg a uh, three three legend. Pay two mana target spell or permanent becomes the color of your choice until end of turn. I think he sees more than he lets on, says Gerard. I don't know why Urza has to disguise himself. It seems completely unnecessary. Also, how did anyone, like, get fooled by this? Isn't it obviously Urza? Shouldn't Gerard should be like, We know it's you, Urza. Take off, the s take off your hat and blindfold. Come on, this is you're not really disguising yourself in uh, all that much. You're wearing the same clothes, Urza. The city of Brass would seem painful. Yeah, with the over with overabundance, absolutely. Akaya, time for the holiday donation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Akaya. I appreciate it. And with that, we will give it to. Uh, we did Goblin Spy already. Almond wants or mutation. This is a red. Sorry. White, green, instant. Destroy target enchantment. Put X11 green sapling creature tokens into play where X is its converted mana cost. Now, if I remember correctly, this card did see play. So it's similar to that one where you destroy the artifact and you get saplings. 
In this one, you destroy enchantments and you get saplings. Except that one was red, this one is white. Uh, I get it. So green, red, destroy artifact. Green, white. It's like white, destroy enchantment. Green, get saprling. Green, get saprling. Red, destroy artifact. Cool card. Now we just have to combine them both. Just turn into a three mana card and you can destroy anything. Uh, next up. Palrog wants Urza's Rage. I, okay, this was a chase card back then. Because it was like the first... I think it was like the first red burn spell that was uncounterable. So if you were a burn player, frustrated by counterspell decks, just having that one counterspell at the right time at the end, uh, you could save your Urza's Rage and all of a sudden your opponent's at two. Urza's Rage you. Oh, you don't have a counterspell for that? Well, that's tough. Tough luck, buddy. <laughs> and also, not to mention, uh, this was played in control decks as well as a removal spell. And if you could pay the kicker of a red and a generic, it would deal 10 damage to a creature player and the damage can't be, pre be prevented. It was uh, quite a wild card. Tommy Sutton's asking, can someone confirm whether or not this set was based off the game slash movie Mortal Kombat? Yeah, <laughs> talking about the Blind Seer. Where's Blind Seer? Raiden! I know, looks a little bit like Raiden. Powerful wizard. Actually, apparently Urza wasn't a wizard. He's an artificer. Okay, Dark Star Shura, Global Ruin. Global Ruin. Uh, oh, there's like a mushroom cloud over there. They've got nuclear weapons in Invasion. That's how they defeated Frexia. Nuclear weapons! The white four generic sorcery. Each player chooses from the lands they control a land of each basic land type, then sacrifices the rest. Oh god! Oh no! <laughs> My manas! So like if you're a monocolor, you just lose it's like a weird Armageddon. But don't worry, you get to keep something. Just keep something. The more multicolor your deck is, uh, the better it is for you. Oh, we did Teferi's response. I love that card. Okay, toilet duck mana maze. Blue one generic enchantment. Uh, players can't play spells that share a color with the spell last played this turn. So players can't play spells that share a color with a sp the spell last played this turn. So I play a blue spell. That's it. No more blue spells this turn. I got the last blue spell. I got it. That's it. We got a Rebecca Gway fan in the house. Sure find ourselves with do or die. Another one of these cards. They have so many ore cards in the set. Oops. Do or die. Do and die. Black one generic sorcery. So separate all creature creatures target player controls into two face-up piles. Destroy all creatures in the pile of that player's choice. They can't be regenerated. So it's another factor fiction-like card. But it's like for creatures on the battlefield. Separate all creatures target player controls into two face-up piles. So they get to choose what lives and what dies. I have a choice for you, opponent. You're going to have to make a choice between one half of your creatures and the other half. But I'm not going to make that choice for you. You're going to have to do it yourself. You have to make it... Uh, I don't know. I can't remember how it worked in, like, Batman... That Batman movie between... What is it, like... Harvey Dent and I don't know, Batman's girlfriend... Super Mew Kitty Cat says, I'm very sick today. I have a Dengu. I have an invade I have invasion and a magazine with the info when it first came. Amazing. Yeah, back then they made magazines on this game. Uh, we did Empress Galena. Yeah, you will have to make a choice. Exactly. In like a Joker voice. Sterling Grove! That, now that's a banger card that even sees play today. Green, it's a green-white enchantment. All other enchantments you control can't be the targets of spells or abilities. You can pay one, sack it, search your library for an enchantment card, reveal it, and put that card on top. So it's like a tutor as well. It, pr it protect, it don't attack, but most importantly, you'll get car the card that you need back. I don't know. I couldn't make that rhyme very well. 
Sterling Grove, a.k.a. Enchantress's best friend. You got that right. Dengue fever is a viral infection from the mosquito. Oof, that sucks. Get better soon, Mew Kitty Cat. Get better soon. I come from the land of mosquitoes. Winnipeg, Winnipeg Manitoba, Canada. It's mosquito world here. I absolutely hate them with a passion. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same number of cards in those piles. No, it does not. You can separate them in as many, divide it as much as you want. One to four, five to two, however you want it. Evan with Tangle. Now this was, okay, I played with Tangle back in the day. Um, it's a fog, but the huge upside. Green one generic instant, prevent all combat damage that be dealt this turn. Attacking creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step. So your opponent like swings in for the win, tangle, and you are completely busted. It's over. It's like, okay, th then my next turn, I s completely swing out and then uh, I swing again for victory. You will not survive two, uh, two shots. Mellow Montoya with the chromatic sphere, really? You're right! This came from Invasion! Man, where would Tron Dex be without Invasion? We have one generic artifact, pay one, tap, sacrifice chromatic sphere, add one uh, mana of any color to your mana pool, draw a card. This actually has seen so much play over Magic the Gathering history. Combo decks use this card to just like draw a card, filter mana, get the color that you need. Uh, still sees play today. This card aged really well. Is not what I would expect. Mage's Contest. The Battle of the Mines. Two old people going at it. Uh, red, red, one generic instant. You and target spells controller bid life. You start the bidding with a high bid of one. Well, that's not a very high bid. In your turn, sorry, in turn order, each player may top the high bid. The bidding ends when the high bid stands. The highest bidder loses life equal to the high bid. If you win the bidding, counter that spell. Oh, God. Does everyone get to bid life? No, you and target spells control it. Okay, so we it's just myself versus them. So if I have more life, I will with certainty counter that spell. But it's at what point does my opponent... How much life is my opponent willing to spend to keep that card from... Like, to actually get that card to resolve? It's a very neat counter spell. Rusted Serpentine says, I watch while I'm at work. Sorry, I can't always provide an alternative if I get busy. Well, sometimes also what a lot of people do is they super chat with like a car, an initial card, but then they got a backup at the same time, just in case the original one didn't go through. Uh, Arcanus, uh, Spirit of Resistance. Topmost Flavor says you should do a show on stupid red rare sorceries like this and Warp World, for example. <laughs> yeah, the whole show. Stupid red sorceries. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll take you up on your offer there. It'd be, it's such a weird show. It's got The old cards have to be red. They all have to be sorceries. And they all have to be stupid. Okay, Spirit of Resistance. Looks like a comic book art. Uh, for a white two generic enchantment, if you control a permanent of each color, prevent all damage that would be dealt to you. Oh. So basically, you just have a Wooberg card out, and you are invincible. Can't touch this. Welcome, Biryani. Although the show's gonna end soon. We did Captain Sisse already. Oh, you don't like that card? It's a legend digger. It l digs for the legends. Almond, bend or break. Uh, I'm doing terrible here. Bend. Break. There we go. Uh, red three generic sorcery. Each player separates all land cards they control into two face-up piles. For each player, an opponent chooses a pile. Destroy all lands in that... Destroy all lands! Oh, no! In that pile, tap all lands in the other pile. Okay, so it's like screws over the lands one way or another. You will You will tap your lands. And also, you will destroy your lands. Oh! Terminate came from this set. Destructimus! You're right. 
One of the most reprinted cards. And one of the most flexible removal spells in all of Magic the Gathering. Because for two mana, you just destroy target creature and it can't be regenerated. Terminate non-invasion. Oh no! Disqualified! Backspace! Backspace! That never happened. No one saw that. Yeah, it was Plane Shift. We'll get to Plane Shift one day anyway. Alex with Jade Leech. This was like, uh, this was considered power creep at the time. You know, four mana for a 5-5 five, five in green. It's like a, it's like Dijin power level. Green spells you play cost green more to play. But like, you didn't care because you had a bunch of mana at this point anyway. Like, you have four mana out, out right now. Next turn you'll have five, so you can play like another Jade Leech if you want to. Great card. Baron and Raimi's daughter, Hannah Ship Navigator, her and Orem are alone among the crew of the Weatherlight, not for getting a reach retrain. What the hell? Hannah Ship. Oh, she came from uh, Invasion. Hannah Ship's Navigator, the three mana one two legend. For three mana tap, return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Seems pretty clunky, but maybe for the right deck, you'd probably like this. Malimo the Broccoli Mage? What is Malimo? Malimo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Broccoli Mage. Get your veggies, uh, folks. Don't forget to eat your greens. All right, for seven mana, it is a Star Star Trampling Legendary Elemental. Malimo, uh, Maro Sorcerer's power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. And certainly by that point, you're doing great. All right, Steve Cooper, thank you very much for your super chat. Uh, half paying attention, don't know if done. Urza's filter and don't know to two people. Oh yeah, we did this one. So we'll donate all three of them. Sorry about that. Still useful in EDH? I'm sure, like, oh, you mean, I don't know if you're talking about Malimo or uh, Hannah Ship's Navigator. Both of them are pretty. This one's like a, this is like a janky card that definitely would be fun to the right player. Just putting a bunch of artifacts, reusing artifacts and enchantments from the graveyard. This is a, definitely an engine going on over there. Okay, Abso with Winnow. The Winnow. This is a two mana instant. Destroy target non-land permanent if another permanent with the same name is in play. Destroy target. Not. This would be so bad in commander. Or, I mean, I guess you need to be up against the mirror or something. Destroy target non-land permanent if another permanent with the same name is in play. And you get, But you do get to draw a card. Would this, be any, uh, this, is, uh, this is so awkward in commander. You know, like several people can have soul ring in play. That's a universal card that everyone will have. Cl yeah, you could beat up the clones. Be uh, you know, beat up the clones. What else are we beating up? Uh, tokens? We're going to beat up tokens? Uh, what else? I think you can beat up tokens. <laughs> Use in a clone deck. Destroy Dragon Island for another permanent. Well, I mean, I'd want to put in my clone deck. I'm going to blow up my own. <laughs> I'm going to blow up my own clones? Whatever. Yeah, that I'm sure there, there is some room to make this work. You can get it for two 23 cents. Uh, next up, Toads is planal, planar portal. Planar portal? Does this thing just not exist? Something portal. Rexian portal. Sorry about that, Toads. I don't think this card exists. Or did I, am I really not spelling it? Planer. Pla planer. No, this thing don't exist. Sorry about that, Toads. We'll look at the Fox Clouds Cauldron Dance. Uh, okay, six mana, instant. All, play only during your combat. Dis sorry, return target creature card from your graveyard to play. That creature gains haste. Return to your hand at end of turn. Oh, it doesn't even disappear at the end of the turn. Put a creature card from your hand into play. That creature's gain. That creature gains haste. Put that one into your graveyard. This is a weird card. It's half show and tell, half reanimator. Get a little bit of both around here. 
Have we done coalition victory? Yeah, absolutely, we did it. Oh, Christopher B says planar. Planar portal. Okay, that one does exist. All right, Christopher B knows the cards. Six mana artifact, pay six, tap. Search your library for a card and put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. 12 mana for a tutor. To be honest, at this point, I would not even bother. Wouldn't even bother doing it. Is this good to... I mean, with infinite mana, I guess this card... Ins this card actually probably is insane in an infinite mana combo deck. Helps dig to, like, any of your win conditions at that point. Oh, look at everyone. Showing... Everyone's showing off that they know how to spell planar. Very good for you. Good for everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, 12 mana tutor in danger. I don't know if it really does. Surefire cells with the Juntu stakes. We hate 1-1s. One yeah, even today we still hate 1-1s. One they hated 1-1s one back then too. Two mana artifact creatures with power one or less don't untap during their controller's untap steps. That's so sad. Look at that. We got like little token hate. What do the little tokens do to everybody? Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining me. Hope you all had a lot of fun. Looking back at Invasion. It was an iconic set at the time. And if you want to be part of the show, you got to be here. 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks, everyone, who supports the show. If you're a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to be part of the show or help super chat so other people are part of the show. And thanks to the coffee crew for being here today so we can enjoy Invasion. Looking back at the old days. we got to thank people like Paul Rog, Abzo, Ari, Thusa, Toads, Toilet Duck, Steve Cooper, Jess Bacon, Catbug, Arcanus Ultra, Christopher B, your friendly neighborhood idiot. We got Evan, Old Boy Mario, Birani. We got Jonathan, Super Mew, Kitty Cat, Mark Zilla, Rest in Serpentine, Ferginka, Arcanus Ultra, Carlos, King Ginger here in the end. I don't know, Invasion. So I just watched today. Have a great day. <laughs> now you know Invasion. I'm sure you're playing cards from back in the day. Satan's Catfish, uh, Re Mr. Deadhead. I think we did Surefire Selves, Jay, Milo, Tommy Siddons, who else knows? Soft Feather, Almond, Jay Thompson, Satan's Catfish, because you guys are the crew. So as usual, only coffee crew, keep brewing up them coffees, and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.